Hello everyone, back to you into today's video. Going to have a look at the weather for next week's 10 days. For today's video, this will take us to around the 23rd of uh, February. So, we've been talking about stratospheric warming, the sudden stratospheric warming that is currently taking place in the uh, stratosphere over the uh, North Pole. And uh, we've been talking about what the effects of that might be. But models have been kind of chopping and changing and trying to latch on to easterlies and then letting them go and then going back to ECs again. Overnight, the model runs have taken a very large step up towards um, easterly scenarios setting up next week. This could be a very cold easterly wind indeed, bring bitterly cold air in from the east, also the threat of snow. Now, do keep in mind, this is still over a week away, so there's a lot of uncertainty about this, although, as I say, the models are upgrading the idea and they have all sort of latched onto it with the overnight model runs. But just because they've done that doesn't mean that later on today or tomorrow or the next day they might not sort of let the idea go again and go back to their milder solution once more. Essentially, they're playing around with ideas because of this stratospheric warming. The stratospheric warming is almost like throwing, talked about this before, almost like throwing a bomb into the atmosphere. And everything is uh, sort of pulled apart, split apart, and then all the pieces have got to come back together again. And so what happens is that models are trying to place how it all fits back together, trying to put the jigsaw back together again, will be different to what happened before the stratospheric warming, of course. But trying to place all of those blocks and troughs and ridges back together and so that's why there's so much uncertainty. So although overnight model runs and today's model runs uh, have very much latched onto this easterly idea, it's by no means a done deal that that's what's going to happen. So with all the caveats um, uh, said for you, let's get on with the video. We'll begin by having a look at what's happening in the uh, stratosphere. So this is the latest at 10 HPA in the stratosphere over the North Pole. The warming continues. I think this is lifted up compared to what we saw yesterday. You can see the black line there lifting up. Remember, the black line shows where we've been with the stratospheric temperatures at 10 HPA uh, through this season, going back into September. So quite clearly, a uh, fairly uh, big warming has taken place uh, at 10 HPA and will continue. At 30 HPA, look at that, looks very dramatic. I said these uh, some stratospheric warnings, when they occur, they are pretty dramatic to look at on these charts. And the black line here is going much, much further up the chart um, at 30 HPA compared to uh, 10 HPA, which is a little bit unusual. Normally it's 10 HPA that goes up first. And then um, at 30 HPA, there's a little bit of a time lag. But uh, it looks like the um, warming really is quite dramatic at uh, uh, t uh, 30 HPA in the stratosphere over North Pole. If it goes much further, obviously we'll be heading up to the top of the charts unless the uh, JMA organisation sort of um, elongate the uh, temperature scale. It finishes at minus 30, so maybe they'll lift it up to minus 20 or something so the black line doesn't go off the chart. But certainly dramatic warming is taking place in the stratosphere over North Pole right now. Set to continue, this is the latest temperature forecast for the uh, stratosphere at 10 HPA over the North Pole from the GFS. You can see the bright colours there indicating that we split the bone of vortex. And uh, so also uh, we have the warm temperatures at 10 HPA. We know we're going down to 30 HPA as well, uh, a little bit lower down in the stratosphere. And this continues over the coming days. Again, we get a renewed intense warming occurring over the Canadian side of the Arctic. That really is a very intense uh, warming indeed there that we have in the coming days. And then into the extended range of the uh, GFS model we keep. Generally, uh, significantly warmer than average temperatures going uh, pretty much throughout. Uh, although it does start to fade out a little bit by the time we get through to the very end of the run, which is actually the 1st of March today. Um, that fades out a little bit, but even so, still keeping generally quite warm temperatures going in the stratosphere at 10 HPA over the North Pole. Looks like we're starting to see a response from our indexes. So this is the Arctic Oscillation observed and forecast chart. The black line tells where we've been with the Arctic Oscillation. So red lines at the end where the GFS ensembles forecasting the Arctic Oscillation to go. Remember, it's just an index reflecting state of the atmosphere. Uh, and uh, when the Arctic Oscillation is positive, you've got low pressure over the pole, you'll be keeping the cold air bottled up in the pole, but when the Arctic Oscillation goes negative, you've got high pressure, you've got blocking over the pole, and blocking is a route to pushing uh, cold air out of the pole, 
down into the mid latitudes. This is where we're starting off at right now with the Arctic Oscillation significantly uh, positive. Look what the GFS ensembles are doing. They are absolutely plummeting. The Arctic Oscillation dropping through the floor tells us that we have got a very strong blocking signal being indicated for the second half of February from the GFS ensembles now, almost certainly a result of that sun stratospheric warming. At the same time, look what's happening to the North Atlantic Oscillation. Now, all through the winter, the North Atlantic Oscillation has been positive. It went positive more or less on the first day of December, and it's been going more and more and more positive ever since the 1st of December all the way through to where we are right now, which is just there. But look what the GFS ensembles are showing. The uh, North Atlantic Oscillation is increasingly being forecast to drop into negative territory. That will be our first negative spell of um, the NAO since back in November, into the second half of November. So quite clearly, the uh, GFS ensembles are picking up on a really big change to the pattern. Uh, and we see this both through the NAO and the AO, both driving into substantially negative territory. I think it's the NAO, actually, that's more impressive here because it's been positive for so long. And now, all of a sudden, all of the ensemble members, or pretty much all of the ensemble members, there is one outlier that sticks up there, but pretty much all of the ensemble members are taking things into negative NAO territory uh, by the end of February, which is really good agreement and uh, a real, really dramatic change to what we've had through this winter, say, since around the 1st of December. So the AO, the NAO look like they are starting to respond now to this warming of the uh, stratosphere. Uh, this is the uh, GFS ensemble chart for the upper air temperatures for the next couple of weeks. Looking at Birmingham uh, today. So the red line here is the 30-year uh, upper air temperature average. Uh, going to be turning milder through the next uh, 24 hours or so. Uh, and then colder again as we get through towards the end of the week, but not desperately uh, so. From the weekend, the uh, temperatures are lifting up a little bit. That's as a ridge builds up. I mean, it's where that ridge goes next through next week that is pivotal as to whether we're turning cold and you'll notice the trend here is to turn things very cold into the final week of uh december of uh, february so these are the dates along the bottom of the chart uh and you'll see that the white line here which is the ensemble means that's taking all of those individual lines of spaghetti, uh, spaghetti and grouping them together that is very much going into negative territory as well. But some of these ensemble members are really very, very impressively cold, going down close to minus 15 at 850 hrm. If we get to that level, we're talking about ice days, even though it's late February, sun's getting stronger, we would be talking about ice days, and we would be talking about severe night frost, and we would be talking about snow as well. Keep in mind there are still a few options on the table to keep things milder. These ensemble members up here are not really going for any think particularly cold uh, through this period anyway. They are a minority option, but they can't be totally discounted until we get 100% agreement within around 96, 72, 96 hours for a substantially cold spell of easy winds, it can still all go horribly wrong. And we know this from past experience. So as long as we have those milder options showing up within the ensembles, and as long as this is out beyond 96 hours, sort of uh, four or five days away, uh, then need to keep our feet on the ground because it is possible that it could go uh, nastily wrong. The thing that can go wrong with easy winds, particularly in Scandinavian highs, is that the high pressure doesn't go far enough north. And so the easterly is generally moved to our south and east. That's the one thing that can go wrong a lot with the easy winds. I'll talk more about that as we get through to the charts. Uh, and then these are the surface temperatures for uh, Birmingham with precipitation. By the way, a lot of dry weather coming up as well. That's the other thing that's going to happen with this change in the weather pattern. We're starting off quite unsettled right now, but it will be going a lot drier as we go through this final week to 10 days of February. Same time, any precipitation does fall if it turns really cold. It's going to be snow. Uh, so in terms of the temperatures at Birmingham, we're starting off uh, around there. But as we go through into next week, there is a definite drop in temperature taking place. Maybe this is freezing just here. This is plus 10 degrees 
just here a definite drop in the temperature taking place. There are some milder on options on the table, so some of the ensembles keep temperatures around 10 degrees, but many of the ensembles are going cold, and some of them are going very cold, going down sort of below uh, minus 5, probably to minus 6, minus 7, minus 8 for some of those ensemble members. I think the GFS ensembles has definitely shifted, along with all the other modern output, towards cold conditions. Temperature anomaly is sort of like that for week eight, coming out a little bit colder than average. Remember, all of this cold easterly stuff is at least a week away, maybe a bit more. So you wouldn't expect these temperature anomalies to be looking particularly cold, but they are a little bit colder than average from the 13th of February to the 21st of February. Precipitation anomalies are coming out close to or drier than average, especially so for England and Wales. So that's how things look on Saturday. What's going to happen over the weekend? This is the midnight run of the GFS, by the way. I thought I'd include both GFS runs for today's video. What's happening with uh, the weekend's weather is that we just get this build of high pressure across the country. So nothing particularly dramatic happening over the weekend, but this is the start of the change, potentially to something very cold. So over the weekend, it's not going to be very cold. It's going to be anti-cyclone. It's going to be a lot of dry weather away from northern Scotland. Probably near normal temperatures by day. May actually feel quite pleasant in the sunshine by day. I mean, bearing in mind, sun is rapidly getting its strength back now. So uh, I suspect it'll feel quite pleasant in the sunshine over weekend. Probably frost uh, by night. And there may be fog patches as well. But as I say, this high pressure is critical as to where it's going to go next week. That's how things are looking on Monday. With high pressure centred over the top of the country. And that continues into Tuesday as well. Notice it's trying to get a ridge going up towards uh, Scandinavia. Go through to Wednesday, and that high pressure is off the east coast of Scotland. So we're bringing in a gentle and not especially cold easterly wind into the south. But beyond that is when we start to take that high pressure north. Now, we've got today 10, which is Friday 23rd of, Feb uh, 23rd of February, and still not doing anything particularly uh, dramatic. But just beyond that, the high pressure pushes up to our north, and there's those very cold easterly winds starting to flood in. So by the time we get through to Sunday 25th of February, we are in a bitterly cold easterly wind, despite being at the end of February, the end of winter. This would be our coldest spell of the winter uh, so far. There's the upper air temperatures. They look very, very cold, and they would certainly be cold enough to be bringing heavy snow showers, if not more prolonged spells of snow, in from the east. And that continues up to 26th February as well. And uh, the east, once it gets going, once the high pressure is locked in, then we go into a very prolonged and very cold easy spell. Notice the complete switch in the pattern so we've got the high pressure up here around Iceland. We've got low pressure down here around the Azores. And so that's the reason that the North Atlantic Oscillation is tanking negative at this point. It's the weather that drives the, pattern, that drives the index. So the weather, the pattern has flipped. And that's the reason the NAO would be going very negative at that point point. Well and truly locked into cold conditions. This is the clock run of the uh, GFS, the latest. And again, over the weekend, we're watching this high pressure building up from our south, dominating the weather through to the start of next week. Eventually, through next week, we start to push that high pressure towards Scandinavia. It's actually going to Scandinavia quicker on the six o'clock run than it did on the uh, midnight run. So we are putting quite a cold easterly wind to the south of the country anyway. Um, even by uh, Thursday, 22nd of February. Notice much of Europe uh, getting those easy wings. And that is the one problem that could go wrong with this. If we don't get that high... Well, there are several things that can go wrong with an easy wind. But the main problem that could go wrong, the main issue, is if we don't get that high pressure up to Scandinavia, centre it there... Uh, if we keep high pressure sort of centred close to the UK, then those easterly winds are going to go down there. They'll go through Germany, they'll go through France, they'll go into Spain, go through the Mediterranean, and they can possibly even go down to southeastern parts of Europe as well and bring brutal cold to the Balkans. So we know the dangers with Scandinavian highs and easterly uh, winds, and despite the seemingly good agreement with model output, we can't be discounting that idea because it isn't uh, close enough to be having good sort of um, confidence about it. Uh, we go up to day 10 and we are in that easterly wind, especially for England and Wales, and then it continues on 
into uh, the final days of February, so up to Saturday 24th of February. Looks bitterly cold with those easy winds, and this low pressure down here is providing precipitation that could bring a lot of heavy snow into the south and to the southwest as well. So uh, we just go off and running men into quite a prolonged cold spell that takes us to Sunday 25th of February. Uh, East MDF is looking like this. So, again, over the weekend, we're watching this ridge building up from the southwest, becoming more dominant through to the early part of next week. Frost and fog with that. By Tuesday, 20th of February, this is a big, big change what the ECMWF has been showing recently. By Tuesday, 25th of February, that high pressure is desperately trying to push to the north. And by Wednesday, 21st of February, we are actually bringing in an east wind. This is happening much quicker with the ECMWF than the GFS does it. So the second half of next week turns bitterly cold. We don't have to wait to beyond day 10. Uh, by day 10, we are already in a very, very bitterly cold uh, easterly wind. And there's the upper air temperatures showing that widely across the country with underneath, with below, minus 10, 850 HPA. And there will be a lot of snow being dragged in with those east winds again. Remember, if we don't get the high pressure there, if we keep the high pressure around here or here, then what's going to happen is that the east winds that are flooding the country at this point will actually be pushed off down to there or down to there. And that's always the danger with high pressure over Scandinavia and easterly winds. Finally, the GEM looks like this. Again, the ridge is building up across the country through the early part of next week. Then it's going up to Scandinavia by the middle of next week. GEM has us in that easterly flow exactly the same as the uh, ECMWF. And that's how we finish up with the GEM. So we finish up with high pressure again blocking around Iceland. And uh, we're pulling down a bitterly cold east to northeasterly wind. All the big three models, the big two models as well as the GEM. So the big three models are all in agreement that uh, we're going to get this high pressure Scandinavia and pull in easterly winds. GEFS is a little bit delayed with it. it. Generally, more or less, is happening a little bit after day 10. Uh, whereas the GM and the ECM do you have actually want this easterly to start as early as around a week away, around a week tomorrow. So um, we've got to wait some more days. I've talked about what can go wrong uh, with this. It's always a possibility that you won't get the high pressure far enough north in Scandinavia to pull in those cold easy winds and may finish up gliding to our south and east, uh, and we can't say that that won't happen, but today, anyway, the models have very much latched on to the potential for a very cold spell of east winds, which will bring bitterly cold air in from Russia, and also potentially quite a lot of snow as well. So it's getting very, very interesting, and we'll have more for you uh, in the coming days about these uh, developments, of course, so do keep checking back for more but uh, at the moment, it looks like it's all on course. A really cold end to the month and a really cold end to winter. Could go wrong, though. Come back tomorrow for the latest. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.